Hey everyone, it's John here, and in this video we're going to take a look at a brand new function in Excel for Microsoft 365. So currently this is only available on the Insider's beta channel, and will eventually make its way to the later releases, but currently you have to be on the beta channel to get this. Now in my opinion, this is going to be the most important function in Excel, so it's a really powerful function that allows you to build your own custom functions in Excel. So let's take a quick look at a, a simple example of this. So the function is the lambda function. Now as you can see the argument list here says a parameter or a calculation. So you can list out various parameters that your function is going to take as inputs and then you can define a calculation after that that's going to be the output of the function. So let's do a real simple example and let's define our first input as x and let's define our calculation as x plus one. So this is gonna be a real simple function that just takes a value and adds one to it. Now if we press enter, we are going to get a calc error here and that's because we've defined our function but we need to evaluate it to return some result. And to do that, what we need to do is use a second set of parentheses on the end of our function here. And this is where we can place our inputs. So this that we've defined, we've only got one input. So we're only going to put one value here. So let's reference a cell value there. And you can see that now I'm evaluating one plus one. And let's just copy that example down. So here I've got the value of two. So two plus one is three. And here three plus one is four. Now let's try a slightly more complex example. And so here let's do X and let's have a second input of Y. And then let's evaluate that as X plus Y. So here I've got two inputs, X and Y, and then I'm adding them together. And then to evaluate this, I'm gonna reference my first input and my second input. And here we've got one and one, so we should get two. Let's copy that example down. And here we've got two and two, so we should have four. And here we've got three and five, so we should get eight. Now the interesting part comes when you use the name manager with the lambda function. So what you can do is I'm just gonna copy this lambda part and I'm not gonna copy uh, where I evaluate the function, I'm just gonna copy the lambda first part here. And you can actually use the name manager to create a callable function that you can use anywhere in this workbook. So let's go up to the formula tab and open up our name manager and we're going to create a new name and here the name is going to be how you call this function so let's just call this add one and here we can create a comment that's going to show up when we try and use this function name And then down here in this refers to section, that's where we're gonna paste in our lambda function and we need an equal sign there. And let's press okay. And now we've got that name here in our list in our name manager. Let's close our name manager. And now we can actually call this inside the grid using that new name, add one. And here you can see that comment shows adds one to a number. And then we just need to, like normal, create a function that references our single value here. Let's press enter and copy that down. So we can now use this brand new function that we've created anywhere in our worksheet. Let's do the same thing with our slightly more complex function here. So let's copy that and go back up to the name manager and let's create a new name and let's 
call this add numbers. And let's paste in our formula. And again, we need a equal sign here. And let's press OK. And close that. And let's try that out. So here it is, add numbers. And we can input two parameters this time. And press enter. And that's going to work. And we're going to be able to use that anywhere in our workbook now. So these are two pretty simple examples of the lambda function in action and how to create a usable function using the name manager and the lambda function. But I've had some time to play around with this and I've come up with some more complex examples that might be actually useful. So let's take a look at some of those real quick. So here's an example of an append function. So I've got two tables of data here. And this append function is going to work based on the column heading names. So you're going to be able to append just like in Power Query where common columns of data are going to be appended together. So here is the function that I built. Here's the lambda function and it's quite complex. So definitely being able to put this into the name manager is going to be a nice way of calling that function rather than building this out every single time you want to append two tables of data. So let's take a look at that. So here we've got the name manager set up with an append function. So I've just named it append. And here you can see that I'm able to put two ranges of data. And then I'm also able to put a value here that's going to show when there isn't a column with data for that. So here in my table of data, I've got first name and a work and personal email address. And then in this table, I've got a first name and last name and a personal email address. And when I append them together, you can see my first and personal and work email address here from table A. And then in the last name column, I've got null values. And from table B, I've got a first name and a last name and a personal email address and some null values because there's no work column in this table. And this is dynamic. So if I change this, so let's say this is actually the work email address and you can see those values shift over into my work column there. Let's take a look at the next one here. So I've got a calendar function. So I had a video where I created this calendar function here uh, with this big ugly formula. And now I'm able to just call this with a simple call calendar and then a single date input here. We've also got a text split function. So here's the Lambda function. And then we can call that by just referencing our text and then the delimiter to split by. Next up, I've got a filter function that allows you to take into account column headers. So we have a filter function, but it doesn't allow you to either show or hide column headers in the results. So I've created one that does. So here's our Lambda function. And again, it's fairly complicated. But here I can call that with the regular filter function parameters. And then I've added a fourth parameter here that you can have as either true or false. So false is not going to return the column headers in the results. And then true is going to return those column headers as well. Let's take a look at the next example. So here we've got a GUID function, so a globally unique identifier. And this is just going to be a randomly generated sequence of numbers and letters. And it's going to be so unlikely that you repeat a value that it will be globally unique. And so here's the Lambda function. And then here we can call it just from this simple 
GUID function with no arguments. Here we've got a password generator. So here's the Lambda function again. And it just takes a single numerical value. So the password length that you want to return. So here we're getting 16 characters. And then here we can call it from this simple password function with a single input here. So we can create a password of length 16 or any other length that we want. So to me, this is probably the most exciting new feature in Excel for quite some time. It's super powerful, going to allow you to build your own custom functions that you can use throughout your workbook. And super excited to see how this develops and new functionality that might come our way from this. If you enjoyed this video, make sure you hit the thumbs up button and subscribe to the channel for future Excel videos like this one. That's it for this video. We'll see you in the next one.